Once again, we're back together. So this time we are going to be looking at the technical maths paper one May, June 2024 exam. So please, if you haven't subscribed, just make sure you're part of the family and please just tell all your friends, your cousins, every person that's doing technical maths, that favorite uncle is doing the things. All right. So I'm going to be starting with uh, question one of this exam. Right. So please just stay with me. All right. So um, by the end, we will be going from question one right up till the end. But we will do that on separate videos. All right. Now let's get into the video. So they say to us, given x squared minus x minus 12 equal to P. Right. They say solve for x if. Right. Firstly, they say if P is equal to zero. So what does that mean? It means x squared minus x minus 12 is equal to zero. All right, so we're going to factorize, look for factors of 12 such that when we subtract them, uh, we are going to get one. So we're going to have x and x. And what are those factors? That's four and three, right? So our middle term is negative. It tells us that, uh, first of all, our constant term is negative. It tells us that the signs are different. So in this case, the bigger product will give us the sign of the middle term. So the bigger product will be negative 4x, right? So, which means that our solution is x is equal to 4 or x is equal to negative 3. Now, remember, in this case, we are going to accept both of the solutions because there are no thirds or there, there are no square roots, right? Also, um, in this case, there is no fraction such that we would reject one of the solutions. So there's not even a need to test the solution. So those are our answers. All right, now let's go to 1.1.2. They say to us, right, if P is less than or equal to zero. Now let's quickly have a look at it. Again, now we know what the critical values are. We have uh, factorized this. So we've got x plus 4, uh, rather x minus 4, and we had x plus 3, right, less than or equal to 0. So what do we do? We're going to draw a number line, okay? What are our critical values? Our critical values are going to be negative 3, so you always start with a smaller number, as well as positive 4, right? And so what you do in this case is that you remember that outside uh, before the negative 3, that's positive, that's negative, and that's positive. This comes from the parabola, right? So if you think about it, if we were to draw a parabola, this portion here is below the x-axis. That's the negative part. Uh, and negative 3 and 4 would be, in this case, your x-intercepts, right? So that means that uh, this is where the graph is negative and beyond that, the graph is positive, okay? So that's where it comes from. So what would be our solution in this case? Where is the graph less than or equal to zero? Definitely, less than or equal to zero would be the negative portion. So which means we're looking at between negative three right and because they said uh, less than or equal to which means negative three is included right so all the way there and again from positive four in fact sorry uh, they said less than or equal to zero sorry about that so that is between negative three and four so it's that portion over there uh, that is included so what would be our solution x is greater or equal to negative 3, right? Rather, uh, should be the other way around. Less than or equal to 4. Otherwise, you can write it as x is an element of negative 3, and I'm going to use a square bracket, right, to, um, to denote that I'm including it all the way up until 4. And that is really what our answer would look like. All right. So I hope that you got that. Let's go to the next portion. Right. So they say P is equal to negative 5. And note, they say to you, correct to two decimal places. What does that mean? We are going to use the quadratic formula, right? 
So if P is equal to negative 5, so in this case, what do we end up with? We've got x squared minus x. When we take the negative 5 to this side, it becomes positive, right? So we're going to have minus 12 plus 5, okay? So that would become minus 7. This is equal to 0. Now, there are no factors of 7 that we can uh, subtract and would give us 1. So it means that we need to use the quadratic formula. So I'm going to say x is equal to minus b plus minus. And please remember, guys, to write down the formula, right? Okay, so because you do get marks for it. So that's b squared minus 4ac, right? This is divided by 2a. So let's substitute. What are our values for a? a is 1, b is negative 1, and c is negative 7. So I'm going to say that's minus, right, note that b is negative 1, so that's minus negative 1, okay? Plus or minus the square root of b is negative 1 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, and c, which is negative 7, all right? And this is divided by 2 times our value for a, which is 1. All right, now let's find out what are our values for A. So I'll have the first one, right? I'll have negative 1 times neg uh, negative 1 times negative 1 would be positive 1. Okay, let's take the positive square root first. So that would be the square root of negative 1 squared, which is 1. Okay, that's minus 4 times 1 times negative 7 right so please be very careful around this to make sure that you uh, represent this well this is divided by 2 so uh, 2 times 1 is 2 so the first value for x is 3.19 right your examiner said we must leave the answers to two decimal places or x would be now i'm gonna go back to that calculation Right, I'm going to just remove and um, replace that with a negative. So that's 1 minus, okay? So the other answer is negative 2.19. All right, and that is how the cookie crumbles, ladies and gents. So those are our answers for 1.1.3. 1 All right, now quickly let's go to the next portion. Right. So now we are looking at solving for x and y simultaneously, right? So they say to us, um, given 